What is up? And welcome back to the Thriving Stylist Podcast. I'm your host, Britt Siva. And today we're talking about impulsive growth theory, the growth destroyer. And just at the top of this episode, I'm going to tell you like, impulsive growth theory is not a scientific study. There was no clinical psychologist that worked on this. This is the theory I've made up. And I wanted to give it a name because I have a feeling I'm going to be referencing it a lot. I think that this impulsive growth that we're seeing throughout our industry is causing the industry to feel extreme fatigue to feel less than. I think it's causing people to make really irrational decisions. And I just want to unpack it a little bit, if for nothing else than to bring awareness to some of the shifts that I'm seeing. So we're going to dig into like where I came up with this, if you might be being affected by it, and hopefully by the end you'll feel some relief as far as how to grow your business forward. So first and foremost, I understand that everybody who listens to this show is looking for growth. Like this is a business podcast. This is not like me coming on and telling stories about my day or celebrity gossip or news. This is a business growth podcast. And so I know that if you're here, growing your business, making more money, living a wealthy lifestyle is what you're here for. And I love that this industry as a whole really caters to those who want to be self-made and want to make it on their own. And so, you know, a lot of people in this industry say things like, well, I'm very multi-passionate. I know that doesn't, often in this industry, that doesn't make you an outlier. It makes you like the perfect person to become a stylist or salon owner or barber because that's so indicative of the people that this industry usually attracts. We're creatives, right? We like the idea of being able to do our own thing the way that we want to do it having freedom and flexibility, I think those are the commonalities that bind us. However, sometimes some of those things can also be Achilles heels, and I want to explain why. So let's get into the facts and figures for just a moment. So historically, you can look up this data, just go ahead and Google it. The number of new business applications grows by seven to eight percent a year on average so some years it's less um, rarely is it more than that but seven to eight percent is the average number of new business application growth year over year so for example in 2017 there were 3.18 million new businesses registered in 2018 there were 3.4 million new businesses registered so it's not saying that the number of small businesses grows by seven to eight percent. It actually grows by a lot more than that. But the number of people interested in becoming entrepreneurial, interested in being business owners, that number is growing significantly. The reason why this counts is when you look back to, I'm a millennial, when you look back to like the boomer generation specifically, or the silent generation who came before them and all these others, um, Gen X to a degree, but m- mainly the boomer generation and the generations before there was a very small number of people who owned big businesses and most people were employees. Like even like there was the handful of people who owned small businesses in town, right? There was the guy that owned the grocery store, the woman who owned the diner in town, right? There was, you know, a handful of these people. More people chose to work for those people because that was the model, right? Owning a business made you the minority. Most people were employees working for others. That was the majority of how the United States looked flash forward and for decades that we've been living in this time of opportunity where one of the amazing things about being here is you you do get the opportunity to open your own business and do your own thing and there's lots of freedom in that and so there's been this increasing curiosity of people who say i really want to do my own thing okay so historically we were seeing that seven to eight percent annual growth okay in 2020 we saw a 25% growth in people starting new small businesses. In 2021, we saw 30% growth. So you're talking two to three times more businesses were created in 2020 and 2021 than ever before. There was this huge entrepreneurial boom in 2020 and 2021 of these people who said, 
this is my time. I'm going to start a side hustle. I'm going to finally go out on my own. I've had, had this creative idea that I've been thinking of for a while, and now I'm going to make the leap of faith. There was this massive number of people who took that opportunity. I think that it was almost the, the perfect time, the perfect storm. And I think it was a combination of a few things. One, being stimulus. Um, there was a lot of additional money in the economy. There still is. Inflation is at an all-time high right now. But there was a lot of opportunity financially for people to do things that they couldn't do before. Number two, Thanks to the slowing of pace of life in 2020 and into 2021, based primarily because of the COVID-19 pandemic, people had more time. The other thing that the pandemic give it, gave us was a renewed perspective. Like how many of you post 2020 just don't want to work as many hours anymore? Like you want to have more life balance. You want to slow your pace a little bit. You still want to do business, but your perspective on what that looks like has changed. For the majority of the workforce, it did. Like you look at corporations now who are trying to get their employees to come back to the office, it's so hard. These employers are learning, losing like 30% or more of their staff because no one wants to come back, right? So there was this increased interest in, I don't wanna to listen to what somebody else has to say. I wanna do my own thing and I wanna prioritize life in a different way, right? Then lastly, we have influencer culture. And I think layering that in created this curiosity, right? We saw people, we still see people blow up on social media. And you watch somebody who's doing, you know, dances on TikToks, and next thing you know, they're they're getting million dollar sponsorships, right? They're getting these incredible opportunities. You know, when I'm scrolling social media, I see so many posts from people who are like, you should do drop shipping. You should do this new thing and you'll make ten thousand dollars passively a month. You should try this. This is how I made money fast. And we were living in this time where it felt like, whoa, people are up to big things. And they were. The data shows that they were. In 2020, 25% of new businesses started increased by 25%. And in 2021, that number increased again by 30%. So you're talking about millions and millions of new businesses starting. So what happened is we got a little jaded. Yes, you did see lots and lots of people sharing stories about how successful that they were. The problem is, the overall stats didn't change. So historically and still now, 90% of startups fail. Here's the trick. Only 10% fail within the first year. So 90% fail over time, but only 10% fail in the first year. 70% fail in years two through five. So what we understand is that a lot of the businesses that were starting in 2020 and 2021, 70% will fail before 2026. And what happened was there was this explosion, and there's still a lot of that explosion radiating of people who are really trying to make it. And you know what? 10% will. Statistically, 10% will. But We've already lost 10% who didn't make it in the first year or two, and now we're gonna see another 70% not make it based on the statistics. I'm not saying that to detour you from starting a business. I'm actually gonna share some strategies in a moment that are gonna encourage you, but what I want you to understand is that I think for a lot of people, they felt this FOMO if they didn't do something creative or new or explore passive income, or it felt like a lot of pressure to do something radical, which leads me to this impulsive growth theory concept. Something else you have to understand was that by the end of 2022, consumer debt was up by 16%. That's a lot in one year. And it's not any one thing that caused that. Like a lot of people wanna point fingers and say like, oh, it's because of businesses closures or oh, it's because of layoffs. It's actually not. When you do the research and find out why debt went up, it's a combination of things. But a huge portion of it is people taking out loans or, or things to start business ventures and not getting the revenue back to recoup it. It's just part of where we're at. There was this big culture of get rich quick and now 
as the reality of, oh shoot, it's not that easy is finally starting to hit? Is everybody starting to realize that? Like, oh man, this is not as easy as I thought it was gonna be. The reality is starting to hit and people are realizing maybe that wasn't such a good thing. One of my favorite quotes from Gary Vaynerchuk is that running a startup is like being punched in the face repeatedly. I think that's so true in that when you start a business, you have to be ready for the blows. There, it's not going to be easy. And whenever you're looking at anybody's business and thinking, wow, I want what they have, you are seeing the best of the best of them all the time. They're not showing you the messy behind the scenes when they're crying in the corner and it's all falling apart. And so it's easy to say like, oh, well, that's not so hard. It's all hard. If it was easy, everybody would be gajillionaires, but they're not. Like running business is hard. And when Gary says, running a startup is like being punched in the face repeatedly. I think a lot of the industry is feeling that right now. I think there's a lot of burnout. We talked last week about imposter syndrome and how people are using that as how they're feeling. I don't think they're feeling imposter syndrome. I think they're feeling this impulsive growth pain. And I want to talk about that. So let's look first and foremost at the definition of impulsivity. Impulsivity is broadly defined as actions without foresight that are poorly conceived, prematurely expressed, unduly risky, or inappropriate to the situation, and that often result in undesirable outcomes. Oof. I think that over the last few years, this idea of being a stylist isn't enough. I've got to be a salon owner. Being a stylist isn't enough. I've got to be an educator. Being a stylist isn't enough. I've got to open six locations. This idea of not enoughness bubbled up from this weird once in a lifetime vacuum that all of us kind of got into thinking that I don't want to miss out, so I've got to do something new because that's what millions of people were doing. And the reality is most people didn't start anything new, but the people who did start something new were the loudest because of social media and they were trying to become influencers and that's how you grow business and all these things. And so it, the pressure really mounted thinking, oh my gosh, this must be what success looks like. I don't think it is. I don't think it ever was. And I wanna relieve some of that pressure and talk about what you actually need to focus on to build business today. The fastest way to make more money, the fastest way to get that flexible schedule you want, the fastest way to build any business is never going to be to start something new. It's always going to be to maximize what you've already have. So I have um, had the privilege and pleasure of working with some very amazing business coaches today. I think there's one mastermind I was a part of that is fairly well known I was a part of it. Most of the one-to-one -one coaches I've worked with in the last two years, y'all will never hear about the partnerships. There was NDAs involved and private consulting. And what I noticed is when I made these big asks to these huge business consultants, one of the stipulations Every single time, it was like the only consistent stipulation is none of these business coaches would work with any business owner who had more than one business. If I was doing this and then something else, I was doing this and I was still owning a salon. I was doing this and I was still taking clients. I was doing this and then I also had a cupcake shop. I was doing this and I was also hand crocheting socks and selling them on Etsy. They would not coach me because really good successful entrepreneurs know that Success does not come by having three businesses and this idea of like multiple streams of income. It makes people really jaded. It's not actually true. When you look at like you look at somebody who does own multiple businesses and you're like, but that doesn't make sense. The people who own multiple businesses are not running them on the day to day. They're like investors in them and that's how they own them. But you don't see a lot of people who are the CEOs of three companies. Yet in our industry, we're seeing that. We're seeing people who are like, well, I'm a stylist and I also educate for such and such a brand and I'm working on opening a salon. So you're the CEO of three things and, and then we wonder why people are burnt out. It's because we're making these very impulsive growth decisions because we think that's what growth looks like. 
No strategic, very wealthy, very successful business coach will advise you to do that. It's essentially the fastest way to burn out and the slowest way to build and sc- or slow build and scale your income. I think back even to my story because let's let's unpack my story for a second and talk about what you think I may have done. So my story is I joined the industry in 2007. I'm licensed in the state of California. I assisted at a salon for a couple of years. I grew a clientele there in a really innovative way. And the owner of my salon asked me, he said, listen, Britt, love you, girl. You're good at building business and optimizing systems and training. You're not so good at the hair. And I said, thank goodness somebody said it because I felt it. And he said, you you have been able to build a clientele for yourself while being terrible at doing hair. If you can do that, imagine what you could do for this business promoting those who are actually good at doing hair. And I totally agreed. And so I stepped away from doing the hair myself and I started coaching my team internally and changing the way the business operations ran in the salon. What I did happened to work, profitability increased, and because of that, other owners in the area started asking how I was doing what I was doing too. The coaching grew very organically. Even at that point, I did not say, amazing, what I'm going to do is I'm going to stay in this salon and be the salon director, and I'm also going to run this coaching business. I knew from the jump that I could not do two jobs and make, make a living and a life for myself. I knew from the start. So what did I do first? I tried to buy out the owner of my salon. I did not say, how do I scale this business as an educator? I'm really onto something. I said, if I can can make this salon triple in revenue and increase in profit massively, why wouldn't I just keep doing that? Honestly, honestly, that would have been the easy shot. (laughs) My life actually would have been simpler and I still would have probably made about the same amount of money at the end of the year had I just kept doing that. That would have been much easier. I couldn't come to an agreement with the owner of that salon. It didn't work out. So then I tried to open another location, uh, two times, three times. It's getting blurry now how far I made it all the way. But I looked at multiple locations, fell apart in city permits over and over again. I did not want to have multiple jobs. I wanted to do the thing I knew I did well in the simplest possible format. When all those avenues closed for me, I went all in on coaching. And at that point, I stopped working at the salon and just did this because I knew that this idea of start a side hustle, you can do multiple things. I knew back in 2015 that that was not it. I had the sense back then as like a 28 something year old something person that this was not gonna be the way it was done. I had to go all in. And so in a massive amount of debt, Um, not making very much money at all at the beginning, we lived on a shoestring so that I could go all in on just this business. I know that's not for the faint of heart. I can't suggest anybody follow that path because I am part of that very small 10% who was able to take a startup and make it. I know that. My point and message in telling that story is I would have been smarter safer and potentially made even more money had I just stayed in the thing I was good at from the start of running salons, owning salons. I could have opened multiple locations using this format that works for me, right? I had that dialed in. That would have been such the easier path for me. I'm almost a decade into running this business I have now and now finally I'm getting some lifestyle balance back. And so what I want, the reason I share that is Any business coach will tell you, it is so much faster and easier to scale and maximize the business you already have than to start something new. Even if the business you already have right now is not going well, it is so much more logical to focus on the thing you've already started, maximize that till the cows come home, and then look at potentially stepping away from that and into something different, okay? So I wanna unpack the reasons I think that people start new businesses or choose to get certified in new specialties really impulsively rather than creating a strong growth strategy where they are. First reason, they're bored. And this is such a common thing amongst especially driven, successful people. There's something that people don't tell you about success is that you start with any goal or any ambition or any dream and you say, oh, I just really want to achieve that thing. And in your mind, you think once I achieve that thing, I'm going to be content. 
anybody who's achieved the thing they set out to achieve, you get to the top of that mountain, you smile, and then you say, now what's next? Pretty much every driven person is wired that way. And it's that drive and that ambition and that quest for more that got them to the top of Mount Everest in the first place. But often people find success. They make all the money. They're working the part-time schedule and they get bored professionally and then they overcomplicate their lives. When instead, they could have scaled their business, been making all the money working two days a week and then spent five days a week on a hobby or giving giving their time to charity or spending the time with their family. But that's so not normalized in this culture we have today. There's all this shame around like, oh, you only work two days a week as if there's something wrong with you. Man, if I could just work two days a week and make all the money, you better believe that's what I'd be doing. And in the salon industry, that is possible for you. The owner of my salon only worked 90 minutes a week in the salon building, 90 minutes. Like the idea that you have to work 500 hours a week is where the break is. And so often people get bored and, or burnt out and they're like, forget it, I don't wanna do this anymore. I need new stimulation, I'm gonna start something else. Very bad idea, don't do that. Number two, not seeing the results they want in their current business. I'm not seeing the results where I have right now, so the grass is greener over there. So-and-so seems to be doing well working for such and such brand. I'm gonna try that. My friends, the grass is not greener on the other side. Be very careful. Number three, feeling underpaid. Often when you're making the money that you want to, you decide, well, this venture must be no good. So I'm gonna try something different because again, so-and-so or whomever seems to be doing well financially. So if I just do what they're doing, I'll see the results they're getting. No, statistically, 90% of the time that will fail. So instead of saying, I wish I was making more money, I better start a new business. It's much smarter to maximize what you have, right? And reason number four is feeling the FOMO. You look at somebody who's 100 steps ahead of you and a decade into what they've built and you say, I wanna have what they're having. I'm gonna take my foot off the gas in the business I have right now, in the goals I have right now, in the pieces I have in place right now, and I'm gonna buy a new car, and I'm gonna have one foot on the gas in the original car, and then I'm gonna have another foot on the clutch in the other car, and I'm gonna try and drive two cars at once. It doesn't make any sense. And the other thing is, often when you see somebody who's successful that you look up to, they are years, if not decades ahead of you, and you have to know, okay, if I'm gonna do that, I'm going to be making massive sacrifices for a time, and you have to ask yourself, is that really what I want to do? I really want you to think it through. So here's how to grow without being impulsive. Number one, if you're bored, Explore something new without trying to have that make you any money for a full year. I understand the feeling of boredom. I'm one of those people who can't even watch a movie in the movie theaters because it's too long and it's boring for me. No matter what the subject is, it doesn't matter. I need more stimulation than that. I think where people mess up is they say, I want to try this new thing. How do I monetize it? You don't. Just try the new thing. If you want to be, if you're bored and you're like, I think I need a new challenge, I want to open a salon, great. Just know the salon's not going to be profitable for a year. It's going to be stressful. It's like having an infant where you're not going to sleep. You're going to feel totally lost. You're going to feel completely inadequate. But if you want a new challenge, you can do that. But what I want you to think of is, am I so bo- bored that I want to spend the next year doing something that makes me no money? If the answer is yes, then you should do it. For me, if I'm, I am bored right now, I'm gonna pick up running again. That's never gonna make me any money, but it's gonna bring me personal fulfillment. Don't feel boredom, don't try to supplement boredom with monetized strategy. It's just too impulsive and not the way to build a successful business. Number two, you're not seeing the results you want. If you're not seeing the results you want working as a stylist, I promise you education is what's missing. You are trying your best. There's nothing wrong with you. You're not stupid. Remember, I admitted in this episode, I was terrible at doing hair and still built a clientele because I I had the systems and framework to do so. So if you're not seeing the results you want in the business you have right now, all you need is education. You don't need to add on an additional challenge or do something completely new. You need to educate yourself so that you have the skills to get you where you wanna be. Number three, if you want more money, double down on the business you already have. We shared in the stats today, your odds of making more money in the new business are slim to none. Do some people do it? Absolutely, 10% do. And I'm a huge fan of, 
you know, failing forward and making the leap of faith. Nobody was ever found success by playing small. But again, going back to step one, if you decide to make the leap of faith, I think you should do it without planning to make an additional dime more for at least one full year. And if you're like, that's okay for me, I just need the challenge, I need the stimulation, I'm okay to do it, even if it doesn't bring initial money for quite some time, then it might be worth it to you. But if you're making the decision simply because you want more money, be very, very careful. There is so much more financial potential in the business that you already have, no matter what it is. If you're a stylist, if you're a salon owner, if you're an existing educator, whatever, there is more money in the business you already have right now than the thing you're randomly thinking about starting. I promise you that. You'll only know if you've been working at this new venture for a year if it has legs or not, okay? Number four, stop looking to anybody else and stop catching the FOMO. You have no idea what anybody else is experiencing. If you look at somebody on social media and you judge what they're doing, you're like, oh, I want everything they have. We know social media is simply the highlight reel. We know that all anybody is showing is the best of the best. Very few people are showing up on their worst day. And often those who do show up with like the crying videos on social media, why are they doing it? Because they want to go viral. Like you don't even know how much of that is authentic. And it's like, is that really what you want? You, you want to expose it all? Like probably not. It's probably not the direction you're actually heading in. So don't say it looks like so-and-so is experiencing this. I'm going to follow their format and hope to strike the same gold. They may be hitting coal. They may not be hitting gold and diamonds. You have no idea. I hope that this idea of impulsive growth theory has made sense. I wanted to kind of sum up and put a bow on a lot of the emotions that are running in the industry, a lot of the pressure that exists in this industry right now. And I want to remind you the story I've shared quite a few times. The stylist that I saw for many years was, inc is, was an incredible woman and still is in my eyes. She passed away from cancer in the early 2000s. And still to this day, her funeral was the most attended funeral I have ever been to. And so if you're buying into the idea that being a stylist isn't enough, or you're not making enough of an impact, or you can't create the wealthy life you want to, I'm doing air quotes right now, just being a stylist, you're so caught up in what's happening on social and you're so caught up in this impulsive growth theory that you're not even seeing the forest through the trees. You are enough, this industry is enough, I know tens of thousands of stylists who make an insane living working in this industry, working part-time. You can have it all. Gain some perspective, gain some focus, look inward more than you look outward, and let the impulsivity go. Y'all, so much love. Happy business building, and I'll see you on the next one.